Okay, great. Well, welcome to this session, this work first session about creating your own social enterprise. Um, my name is Louisa and I'm part of the careers team and I'm here along with my uh, colleague Charlotte Godfrey and um, and then we also have James Carlin with us as our presenter and our speaker today from 3SG, which is great. Really excited to have you here, James. Um, so what we're going to cover in this session today is um, we're going to talk a little bit about a new um, fund that's available through Bar Sparks programme, and it's all around supporting students to explore and create social enterprises, so to test out ideas. Um, and this session's really starting off, um, hopefully starting people thinking about what they might want to do, um, and then a little bit of detail about that fund, and then we'll talk about a follow-up session for more support if you would like to apply for that fund. So we'll give a little bit of an overview of that. We'll talk a little bit about what a social enterprise is and, um, and the Bus uh, programme. And then we'll hand over to James, who's going to um, talk more about social enterprise and particularly in the local area, and then give some top tips and advice um, and thought about you know, how you might set one up, what you might need to think about, um, and, and various projects um, to get you inspired and, and your ideas pulling together. Um, we'll then have time for any, any questions and discussion at the end, and then next steps and further work fest sessions and support going forward. Um, and then we'll be finished at four. So that's the session today. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Charlotte for this part. Um, hello. Um, thanks, Louisa. And on cue, my dog has started barking. Um, I'm so sorry, everybody. If she doesn't stop in a minute, I'll, I'll um, let you carry on, Louisa. Um, but basically, um, yeah, Bath Sparks is um, here to give uh, enterprise support for our students and our graduates um, who are thinking of business ideas um, or going freelance. Um, and we haven't done any social enterprise um, specific support before so what we wanted to do was to uh, create um, an award specifically for for you to explore what social enterprise could be um, but also uh, deliver some workshop support around that to really help you grow in confidence and to, to grow your ideas um, so so what we've got um, is an award now um, set up which we're launching through today's work fest session um, where you can apply for up to 500 pounds um, to support your social enterprise idea um, and what I thought might be helpful was to set the scene a little bit before we move on to to James uh, to tell us more about social enterprise and um, what that means locally to us is to share a link um, a YouTube clip sorry from the International so uh, Social Enterprise uh, Mark CIC which are an organization that are responsible for um, creating a, a standard I suppose for, for social enterprise um, and it's just a really short minute and a half clip to um, sum up what 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 social enterprise is. So what I'll do is I'll just share share that um, via a tab. Hang on one second. And uh, here we go. What is a social enterprise? And we'll click on that and um, play. I don't think it started at the beginning, Charlotte, sorry, just to say. Is it not working? It's it's a little judgery, but I, I don't think it was at the beginning when you started. I oh, think it was a few... sorry. Hang on.
Great, so we'll just come back and um, start sharing the, oh, hang on. Sorry, just go back and share the presentation again. Great. Okay, so hopefully that kind of set the scene for, for those of you that um, maybe are just kind of starting to explore what social social enterprise um, means. Um, and what we're going to do, um, this is obviously our first session. Um, and uh, following that, we've got another session uh, next week on Monday, the 21st of June, uh, which we've got the link for and you can book um, through my career, um, where you can uh, have the opportunity to work with James again um, in, in a slightly more targeted way to talk to talk through your social enterprise idea and and develop that specifically um, and then we have um, an, an easy application form that you can complete by Friday the 2nd of July um, and then off the back of that you'll be invited to if shortlisted you'll be invited to pitch um, on the 6th of July and again that's just going to be a small panel be Louisa myself and, and possibly James or, or, or one other if James isn't available um, and then we look to giving everyone feedback by the 9th of July um, and awarding um, as I say up to 500 pound uh, pounds awards for your social enterprise ideas and it's not just about that award it's about well, um, linking you up and signposting you um, to other support that we might be able to offer through the careers team um, and also outside and joining up networks uh, and mentors for you um, that would fit well with your idea and, and help it to, to grow. So hopefully it sounds quite interesting um, and what we want to do over the next over the next uh, academic year really is really grow social enterprise so we're looking for lots of feedback and um, we'd love to hear your ideas and, and the type of support that you'd, you'd like as, as your social enterprise ideas grow. So I think we are ready to hand over to, to James now um, from 3SG. Uh, so yeah James should we share your presentation for you yeah, thank you um, okay hi everybody yeah so my name's James Kyle I'm the director and co-founder of 3SG and that stands for third sector group so third sector is a term that um, people use to describe charities social enterprises community groups um, all kinds of different um, organizations that are trying to make a, a positive difference and uh, on that picture in front of us you can see um, should be 129 different organisations um, that are members of 3SG and work right across Bath and North East Somerset. So um, if you look on there, quite a few would be, you know, the vast majority would be um, what you might call traditional charities. Um, but then there's quite a few social enterprises on there. Um, so those are, those are ones that have, you know, tend to be set up fairly recently, maybe within the last five years. Um, they're ones who, um, you know, tend to have um, uh, more younger people on the board and, and involved. Um, they quite often will um, be making most of their income from trading, as opposed to, you know, more traditional charities who generate most of their income from grant funding. Um, and what we what we know is that with social enterprises. Um, they're very much purpose driven and, and they put the values right at the heart of the organization. So um, they'll be looking to do things like minimize their environmental impact. Um, they'll be focusing on their sustainability. Um, they may well have a good representation of BAME directors. Um, they might be living wage employees. So what we know is that all of these um, positive social environmental factors are, are built into social enterprises from the start. Um, so just a quick word about 3SG. So 3SG, um, we've been around since 2016. Um, and in many ways, although we are a registered charity now, we very much took the social enterprise model in terms of identifying a problem, um, bringing a group of people together, and then going out and trying to solve that problem. So the, the problem that we saw was that um, there's a lot of disparate organisations in Bath all, all you know, some working together sometimes, some working separately. Um, so we, we thought let's try and bring this activity together and have a, 
a focus and that's what that's what 3SG does. Um, our work over the last 17 months, like a lot of others, is, has gone from um, very much a charity to charity network to becoming a much bigger thing. So we have um, recruited 2,000 volunteers uh, and they have been supporting um, thousands of people with food and medication deliveries, um, as so especially during the first and second lockdown. Um, I think we've done about 100,000 pounds worth of volunteer expenses. Um, we've helped, I think, somewhere in the region of 2,500 people access food and medication. So it's a good example of, of where an organization that's quite flexible, quite small, um, can make a big impact. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, I'm just going to talk to you today about seven key steps in terms of um, trying to understand a little bit more about you know what what it what it involves to be a social enterprise, um, how your idea might fit in locally, um, you know what what is the kind of bigger context, and just some of my sort of top tips and and thoughts on how you could uh, how you could get started. Um, if at any point you want to chip in and ask some questions or you want me to elaborate further, you know I'm very happy to do that. Um, this is just a sort of framework, really. This these slides so I can talk off off topic or. Um, go into much more detail if you like. So, first, um, first question really is, you know, to try and pin down your idea. So, I've I've got an example there of um, BA1 Radio, which is a local radio station for Bath that you may know about. Um, so, in Bath, we have um, three local radio stations. Um, we've got BA1 Radio. I think there's um, Radio Bath and Bath Radio. I could have got that wrong. <laughs> And um, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is if you're coming into Bath and thinking, I know what I'd like to do, I'd like to set up a, a local radio station um, with a social enterprise model, you do have to have done a little bit of work just to think, well, what, what is already out there? So am, am I going to set up a fourth local radio station or would it perhaps be better for me to think about a really awesome podcast for Bath, which I don't know if one exists. I haven't seen one. Um, so it's just thinking, it's thinking about your idea. It's doing that little bit of research and just seeing what is available. So the thing about Bath is that um, it's part of, you know, the bigger Bath and North East Somerset area. So um, two quite different areas. And if you look at the, um, the demographics of, of who might be out there, this is um, this is the kind of total population. And if you think of the 94,000 people in Bath, 15,000 Canesham, and then it breaks down into some of the bigger towns and villages, um, that's really important to understand in the context of what you want to do, because um, Bath is a very different place in, in many ways to Midsummer and Autumn. And um, Kensham is also very different to Peasdown. You know, they are separate towns, separate places, but within kind of this this map here that you can see um, of, of Bath and North East Somerset. So once you've thought about your idea, going back to that first slide, and then um, you've thought about who might be your potential beneficiaries, that's where I would really encourage you to think of, you know, do some research and think, well, OK, I've had this idea. Um, I think I know who might potentially be interested in it. Um, but is anyone doing that already? So that, that would be my first sort of starting point is to do that, that bit of research. Um, you can either talk to me about that if you want to. You can ask us, you know, what, what do we know about, about who's tackling that issue? Or, um, you know, obviously you can, can Google. Or um, a good point as well to look, to look through is uh, Companies House. So you should be able to see on on the company's house website which uh, which organisations. Um, so once you've once you've thought about you know your idea in a bit more detail and you thought about where potentially you might want to look at, at working, um, you need to understand like what the you know the demographic demographic information looks like across Bath and North East Somerset. So. Um, Sorry, this is from 2017. I wasn't able to find anything more recent. Um, but you can see 
in that 20 to 24 age group category do have a, a big spike here in Bath and, and that's obviously because we've got two universities in the area um, so interestingly if you look at the number of people who've been vaccinated in Bath and North East Somerset it's actually a little bit lower than other areas and that's not because you know we haven't we've been slow in terms of vaccinating or anything else it's just because you know the people in that age group are not are not old enough to have their vaccinations yet so it means that the rate is lower so it's just important to understand uh, some of those factors um, before you do anything so um, for for 3SG our kind of core demographic if you like is actually probably people um, you know professionals work probably in their from say their early 30s you know up to their kind of late 70s those, those would be the kind of core professionals that we tend to engage with um, but you know some of the, some of the charities that and, and see us social enterprises that we work with um, they might actually work with a very very small demographic so they may well just work with with young people who are aged 11 to um, 15 so if, if you know that within the area there's um, 5,000 people in that category it just helps you to um, set the context of, of what you want to do and um, make it a little bit more realistic um, because there's no point setting up a an amazing lunch club for um, you know women in their 90s if there is possibly only 600 and they're not digitally enabled um, and you can't reach them so all I'm trying to do I, I mean it's kind of obvious stuff but it's just trying to think in a little bit more detail about um, who might be your audience um, when, when you come to, 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 to think more about your idea. Um, so with, with the next slide, I, I always try to think um, at its most basic level, what kind of places, activities, things are people doing? So um, if I take it back to 3SG, um, I've got a pretty good understanding of the kind of things that you know our members are doing so um, it just helps me to, to get into the mindset of how to communicate with them effectively and actually be a membership organization that that works for them rather than um, you know just kind of assuming that what we're doing is is actually what they need so if I think you know if I'm thinking about well I'd like to do a social enterprise with sport um, you know you need, you need you would need to talk or at least be aware of Bath Rugby Football Club, um, some of the cricket clubs, uh, some of the kind of grassroots um, activities, what gyms there are, all that kind of thing. You know, if you're looking at kind of a cultural, more cultural something to do with um, history or history of Bath or something, you know, the National Trust is you're going to be one of your key organisations, the Bath Preservation Trust, um, you know, some of the museums that they run. Um, the fact that Bath's a world heritage city, um, you know, if you if you're looking at Bath's religious community, it's very um, strong. There's a strong network of um, different churches that come together. Uh, you know, they've got a very visible presence in in the city. Again, you know, it's just thinking. Okay, so there's there's 50 churches in the area. There's there's ones just outside in Canesham. Um, you know, there's been a new um, Hindu um, temple has been put into Bath for the first time. So it's it's just understanding that context. Um, I think I think quite often um, when I've worked with social enterprises in the past, um, if they haven't thought about actually where they can reach people that they're trying to engage with, it can cause problems later on. Um, because it's it's great, you know, if you set up a service. And you, you think you know that there's an audience but then you haven't really understood quite how they might engage with what you're trying to do and I think that's that's an important point um, and there are in, and what, what's good about the areas that in each area, in each part of Baines like Canesham, Midsummer, Norton, Bath there are organizations that are really good at helping you um, sort of providing a way in so if you were going to work in Bath and you wanted to work with the businesses um, you've got organization called the Bath Business Improvement District or Bath Bid. Um, if you went to Midsummer Norton, their town council might be able to help you with a small amount of funding or offer some support. Um, Pease Down, uh, they've got active councillors, they've got a hub. Um, you know, all of those 
kind of support networks and the same applies to Canesham. They, they're all there. Um, so it's it's just about thinking, you know, what what is I've, I've got a like limited amount of time. I've got limited budget. I've got an idea. Who are the people that can, uh, you know, help me to to kind of get this off the ground? Who are they? Who are going to be my advocates? So again, we're going back to three SG. You know, I had had a network of people that understood what I was doing, um, especially around funding, and they can go out and they can actually say, look, there's this new organisation. They're really trying to reach charities. I think you can help, you know, get some help from them, and then they they do the introduction for you as opposed to you. Um, just creating this thing, putting it out there, and expecting people to to find it. So, I think this is this is a, a good starting point if you're quite new to sort of running projects. Is just to think about your own capacity and how many people potentially, you know, you might be able to work with and support. Because um, if I think if I think of what I do in my day job, I've, I've got a coordinator and myself, um, and we did a bit of analysis and we looked at how many different ways people could get in touch with us. So we, we looked at, you know, we looked at Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, both our email addresses, a, a generic email address, our phone number, um, you know, went, the list went on and on. And, we worked out there's probably somewhere in the region of 20 to 25 ways that people could get in touch with us. Now, in some ways that's good because it means that people are engaging and they can ask you questions and they can, you know, come for meetings with you. It's all good. But realistically with just two people and that many different ways of other people contacting you, it can get quite overwhelming. Um, so it's worth thinking at the start, well, okay, so if we, We've got this idea. Um, maybe you've got a couple of people that could sit on your board. Um, I've got a few friends that want to help. So that okay. So maybe that's five, five volunteers. Um, maybe I did a, a previous project and there's a few people from there. So that would be another five. So that's ten people. Um, do we know anybody who might be able to fund us? Any donors? Um, you know, again, we've got some family, um, a few friends. So that's you know maybe another five, ten people. Um, do we have any fundraisers? So is there anyone out there who could go out and advocate for us and be a, you know, be a bit of a champion for what we do? Again, add another couple of people in. So, you know, you're really getting to kind of 20, 25 people. Um, social media, I mean, I won't need to tell you this, but obviously that's going to be a key part of your engagement. It's a key part of telling your story. So, you know, if, if you look at 3SG, we've got um, about a thousand people on Instagram. Um, maybe 2,000 on Twitter, 1,000 on Facebook, various others. So, you know, add all of that together, you're looking at kind of 5,000 people that you can reach. But it, on the flip side, it is also 5,000 people that could potentially get in touch with you. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's just thinking what is, what's kind of manageable when I'm when I'm putting things out there, when I've got ideas and when we're doing projects, what's, what's going to come back, what's manageable with that. Um, and then, you know, adding a wider network. So, um, you know, actually, like Louisa and Charlotte would be good examples for me where, you know, we don't work together on a daily basis, but if there's something that's kind of relevant, we sometimes share it, you know, good contacts to have in a different um, area of what's going on in Bath. Um, so it's, it's kind of building up that that list of people as well. And then, you know, the core, the key is like who, who's going to benefit from what you do. So um, how many people from those those demographics that we looked at a minute ago, how many people are going to um use the service so i would just start i just think i just do it do it like this just think this is roughly what we want to do this is the kind of um channels we're going to use you know how many people are we going to actually be looking to work with um and i would suggest that to begin with you know you just keep it quite focused and you try to to just think you know focus on some of the governance stuff some of the getting the setup, getting your social medias going, getting yourself organized, having your idea, having having some conversations with potential partners, um, rather than, you know, building up a huge network that is very difficult to maintain. I mean, I'm, I'm talking from personal experience because we had, you know, these 2,000 um, 
volunteers join 3SG in the space of two weeks. So it's very, very difficult to give everybody the kind of level of service that you would want when they all come at the same time. Um, so just just about thinking through that beforehand. Um, does anyone has anyone got any questions? Anything you want to to ask me before I, I go on to the next point? No. Feel free to just pop them in the chat if you've got anything. Um, so another another kind of exercise that I would look at is um, you've got your your sort of sun here. So you've got your your idea. So, you, you know, mo most people who are setting up social enterprises, um, what, what they've got is a clear, like a clear, like a clear mission, a clear social mission. Um, they, they're in control of the organisation so they can do the decision making. Um, you know, they're giving away the pro the, half their profits in their surpluses, you know, like transparency. You've got all of those things that, you know, embedded into your, your mission as a social enterprise. Um, and that's, and then you found your gap, which I think is, you know, it's always going to be key. If you look at an organization called, um, Nova sports community interest company who work in Bath, they, they do, um, you know, exercise and competitive sport for disabled children. And I know, you know, no one else is doing that in Bath and they do it really well. And it's something that they can bring funding in because, you know, they found a gap, um, but sitting around all of that activity is all of this other more partnership focused stuff so if you look at my diagram there um you, you know it's kind of maybe helpful to see it as as, as just one part of a, a bigger a bigger system so um you know you might you might get into doing training a lot of cic's do that a lot of social enterprises do do that so do you have the skills for training do you know how to um, set up a, a Zoom training. Could you lead a, a two-hour training course online? Um, how how would you do the one-to-one -one element? Are you like a people person, or would you need to bring some somebody in who's who's good at, who's got that skill? Um, where would you, in terms of doing the actual delivery of the service, would you be able to know about things like safeguarding, um, finding suitable venues? Um, Keep, keeping the people that you're working with safe, you know, all these things start to become pretty pretty key in what you're doing. Um, and then in terms of like the local community side of it, so you may need volunteers, so reaching people outside of your own network, you may need a building. Um, you certainly need to generate publicity for what you're doing. Um, funding is, is obviously crucial to any not-for-profit organization. Um, it's not easy at the moment. There's there's probably more competition now for less funding than there ever has been, um, and that that's that's tough. It's it means that you you know funders are looking for good ideas that, that fill a, a gap. So, um, you know, if you've got that, and then you you can kind of show all of this other work on the outside of that, that that's where you you actually can become quite fundable to to different organisations. Um, I, I, you know, and then some of these points is things that I've already talked about, like defining the needs and um, finding your volunteers. But it's that kind of crossover, really, there in the diagram between all of those different elements. So, you know, you might have a business that is willing to give you some funding and they'd also give you some volunteers or um, perhaps you've got someone who can do some training, um, but they also do, you know, will give you some social media support. It's that. It's that sweet spot, really. Um, and what you what you don't want to be is trying to do all of those different things just yourself, um, or maybe with like one other person, because um, it's just it's not really you know it's never going to be sustainable for you, um, and you'll just find you might be able to do a couple of things really well, but actually, you know, if you're looking at like the bigger picture of the organisation, um, it, it's only going to benefit from having lots of other people involved who've got lots of different skills. But I would caveat that and say um, you don't want too many because, <laughs> you know, organisations that that have too many people from the start, it can be quite difficult to, um, you know, make, make decisions, move quickly, um, 
be reactive so you, you just want to find a you know a, a good balance there um and and just be just kind of be generally aware that each 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 other you know each organization that's within our ecosystem if you like in bath and Naughty somerset has also got this kind of um this diagram so um with with 3sg we don't have you know necessarily a competitor as such but part of sitting alongside this would be the council it might be um the ruh it would be bath business improvement district that i mentioned you know so all these organizations have and the, the universities they all have their own system and it's just how you kind of work alongside that or sometimes you know the two might cross over so something just something to be aware of so i think i think for me it's um it, it's quite key for you to just think about how you're going to reach people um that you know may be interested in what you're doing now i um i think this is you know this is you could do a whole slide on it in terms of how this might have changed with with covid um but i think ultimately you've got you've got kind of a like so many different routes available to you it's just about trying to work out what what is going to have the most impact so if you think um if you think if you took instagram for example so we didn't really do much on instagram before covid um but you know someone helped us to set up a page they helped us to grow it and actually we you know we recruited most of the 2000 volunteers through Instagram, which is a, kind of astonishing for us really, considering we didn't really use it before. Um, so that that was that opened up like a whole new channel for us. Um, for, for some charities, you know, if they're publicizing events, they might, you know, the, the limit of what they might do, for example, is just put a poster on a window like this, in the charity shop, they might set up an event, right? Um, and they might do some tweets about it. You know, and, that, and that would be it. Others would maybe pay somebody who could actually go out and market it. They would be putting press releases in all the local papers. Um, they'd go to um, Minuteman printers and they'd have flyers put up across Bath. You know, it's it's all different approaches and they're all valid for, for different audiences. Um, but I, I think you do need to just be conscious that it's competitive. It's a competitive space where you, you're all trying to get attention from people. Um, and you do have to be quite sort of clear. And I, I give you an example of, of an organization that does this really well um, called We Get It. And maybe we can send the link um, at, the, at, the end of the, um, at the end of the presentation. But if you look at We Get It, they're a cancer charity, um, provide cancer, cancer counseling support. It, their, their messaging is really nice and consistent across everything that they do. So, they, they tell a story of their small social enterprise, um, mainly led by people that have gone through cancer themselves and have come out of the other side. Um, all of their branding looks really nice across the different things with, that you see it. Um, and it just feels like a key. It feels more. It feels more than it perhaps it is, if, if that makes sense. So see, I, I know sitting behind that that organization, that social enterprise is is about five trustees, five directors. Um, I think they've got, I don't think they've got any paid members of staff yet. Maybe, maybe it's one person. Um, but you know, if you have a look at the website and the social media, it feels like um, a bigger organization. And that is how, you know, you can then really develop what you're doing um, by by just by just have, by, by making things look like they're cohesive and part of the, the same thing. And, and I try to do that with 3SG. People do say to me. Oh, you know, I can't believe you're only two people. And I think for me, that's that's a success. You know, that shows that the reach we're having is is possibly more than people think two people could could do. If that if that makes sense. So, um, you know, and any time you can put into having that kind of clear vision, at least even from the very basic, you have um you have the same logo on your Instagram as you do on your on your um. Facebook and you have your MailChimp looks a bit like your Instagram, you know, your MailChimp used to send your newsletters out. Um, and if you ever do a press release or get featured on a on a blog or something, you know, you're kind of talking about your story, you're, you're using some of, you know, you're saying these are the people involved and it just sort of builds up a kind of picture of you as an organization that that may help, um, you know, may help a funder to, to become interested in and get behind what you're doing. 
Um, so th this is a workshop um, that you're all welcome to come to if you want to. Um, we're doing a workshop just about, um, you know, how to start your charity communications. And, uh, you know, I talked to um, Louise and Charlotte about this, and, but, you know, you are very welcome to come if you want to. Um, it's just, I think there's, if you can get the communications right from the start. So if you look, you go right back to the first slide and you look at um, all of these different organizations here and they, they will all have, um, you know, different, different ideas, different problems that they want to solve. They will all have thought hard about, you know, their branding, their social media. Um, they'll all be, many of them will be looking for funding from the same funders. Um, many of them will have the same problems, you know, might have too many people that want to help, but not enough staff to support them. Um, so it's just good for you, I think, to, to be aware of that as you, as you kind of start your journey, just think, well, where, where do we fit into this? Who, who have I got that can help me? You know, what's the potential reach? Who, who's going to benefit? Um, what support networks are out there to help me? Cause it is, it is, you know, it can be a lonely, can be a lonely thing running, um, a very small organization, whether that's a business, a charity or social enterprise, like it, you know, sometimes there's, there's so much that you have to do, even if you're just thinking, well, I've got to do the accounts. Um, I've got to arrange a board meeting. Um, I've got to, to get some social media out at least once every day. Then I've got to do the thing that I'm trying to do. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to solve this problem. Um, and then I might have a little bit of time to, to meet up with partners, try and do some fundraising, you know, and then make, do, do, do a bit of trading, make some income for the organization. Even, you know, if you think about all of that, um, it, it, is, it can be difficult, but you know, the reward is that you, you can really make a difference in a, in a specific area that you feel really passionate about. You can kind of mold the um, organization to the values that you believe in. Um, and, you know, you might be able to get to the point where um, you can actually make quite a significant difference on a, quite a unique issue in a way that, um, you know, it's not, it wouldn't be easy necessarily for an existing charity to just sort of pivot what they're doing um, and set up, you know, a brand new project doing something completely different to what the charity's always done before. I mean, it doesn't say it doesn't happen. You know, some, if you look at some chari local charities, they might set up a cafe, for example, um, and quite often the cafe would be a social enterprise that and generates funds for the charity. Um, but if that charity was going to say, do a, a completely different project to what they've always done before, you know, that's not, that's not an easy thing to do. Um, and it's not always easy to find funding for it. So, you know, that's where social enterprises come into play because they can kind of see those opportunities sometimes. Um, and, you know, may, maybe they then grow into the, to bigger charities that, that that does also happen. So, um, Hopefully that was, um, you know, useful and, and relevant. Um, gives you a few ideas to start with. Um, I think if, if anyone's got any questions, please, you know, just let me know, and I'm happy to happy to answer them while I'm here now. Um, otherwise, um, you know, yeah, welcome to come on to that event and learn a bit more about uh, the comm side of it and find out a little bit more about the kind of support 3SG offers to um, to organisations like yourself. Thanks very much, James. That was brilliant. Um, I just put a quick poll up just to see, um, to get a sense of, of, of where you guys are with your ideas really at the moment. It'd be great if you could just click yes or no on um, whether you've got a social enterprise idea already. Either's, either's the right answer. It's just kind of nice and interesting to, to know what stage everyone's at.
Oh, okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, so one one person's got an idea already, and um, three of you, I assume you're just interested in what social enterprise could potentially uh, mean mean for you, which is fantastic. But hopefully, um, might inspire you with some some ideas to put forward to, um, for our social enterprise award um, later on. Louisa, shall we go back to um, our presentation. Has anyone got any questions they'd like to ask uh, James at all? Great, I Eileen. Do you want to um, un unmute or just just uh, type in type in chat? Yeah. Hi. Um, I was just curious about right at the very start how you sort of came up with your idea for your social enterprise to, to bring all those those groups together. Um, it, it, I was just curious about, you know, the, the, the very first sort of step in, mm. that you went through. Thanks. Yeah, well, I, so I, um, I was working for um, a, a charity called Local Giving and, and they, um, they give support for for small organizations with their fundraising and um i slowly built a kind of network of like 20 30 local charities and we all just said to each other wouldn't it be great if we just had some events where we could do this more often um wouldn't it be good to have a bit of a collective voice sometimes rather than um you know the council just sort of reaching out to individual charities so that that was the kind of seed of it and then some other people came to me and said you know we want we've got this idea as well i think we i think we need this in bath most other areas in the country have got one but we don't have one here um so between the, those kind of two things having a network and then having you know some charities behind it, it just took off really quickly and um the, the value of it is that you know when you need when something like covid hits like you've got these 129 organizations that okay some are more involved than others but you know they do know they do know that there's a way to come together and there's a, a sort of way to facilitate that um so and then i think i think there is an element where because i um because i had done a bit of planning i, I was ready to cope with um with what happened with covid because i, I didn't expect 2000 people to come forward but i did have enough um like kind of behind three issue like all, all of it was set up we were, we were up and running so it was i was able to just react quite quickly um uh and you know we, we were able to, to do what we've done but i think i think ultimately it's, it's it does help if you know you know kind of have a bit of a an understanding of like what what the um what the local area looks like or even if you don't just having a good understanding of the the, the things you're passionate about and what where you want to make change in society i think i think that really is critical um because it's that passion it's that like inspiration that will keep you going and would be attracted to other people who might want to get involved or fund you or you know partner with you so it's, it's that kind of spark if you like thank you can that's really interesting. Can I be a bit cheeky and ask, I have a part B, and ask, were there other sort of, I don't know what the right word is, mechanisms, vehicles that you could have used as opposed to a social enterprise? So presumably you could have registered as a, another charity? Yeah, I mean, we, we, are, actually, we are actually a charity now um, because... Um, when we stopped but when we started out we um we were you know under a different model but we we did become a charity because um just because of the growth really and like we did we just got to the point where um we wanted to be a membership organization so that you know all 129 members felt part of 3SG so to do that we had to become what's called a, a charitable incorporated organization um and you, you do you will see that you will see that where people grow their social enterprise from um you know from from that model and then turn it into a, a more conventional charity and quite often that's because you know there are some funders out there who will only fund charities or um 
it's got to the size where actually it, it just makes sense for them to you know to give it that structure but I think I think when you when you've got an idea and you're starting out the social enterprise model is perfect because it you know it, it, it's fairly easy to set up um, it gives you some protection financially um, you, you can and, and crucially when you're when you're a charity um, like I'm not I'm not technically in charge of 3SG because we've got trustee we've got 10 trustees and they they technically make all the decisions um so if but if i'm running a social enterprise and i'm the director um and i sit on the board with the other directors then i'm in charge and i can make the decisions so some people you know it takes a bit of a journey sometimes to become a charity because they want to have that control and you can't yeah, you can't. No problem. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Um, you can't be um, the the chief. You can't be the, the sort of main trustee of your charity and also be paid. So, you know, some people they might have, they might be doing something because they love it and they don't need to take your salary. Um, but there's plenty of people in the. It's called the voluntary sector, but there's plenty of people who you know they need to earn a living as well. Um, so for them, it's social enterprises where you have that control and you can also get paid great thank you thank you james that's brilliant um any other questions um for james Okay, um, well, do pop, pop them in the chat if you think of anything. Um, and in terms of sort of next steps, so that's, that's been really useful, um, all of your advice, James, and insight and, and inspiration also. Um, so this is um, recorded, this session, and we'll be sharing it with everyone booked on, um, so you can, you can re-watch and pick up some of those tips. Um, and also we have um, the next session coming up, so I'll put the... The link to my career where you can book onto that session in the chat there um, and that will be um, about um, applying um, to the social enterprise fund so actually that the title's a, a little different it's um, applying to social enterprise fund and, and getting advice for your idea um, whatever stage you're at um, as Charlotte said earlier the timeline which we'll share in these slides as well um, the deadline for that will be the 2nd of um, July and the application form will be live on Monday the 21st so you'll have a couple of weeks um, it'll be a short application form and it's you know for any stage you might just want to be testing something out or you might be um, moving forward with your with your idea so we really welcome um, all applications but that session on Monday if you can make it then um, that will really help push forward your application it will also be recorded um, but being there will will be a chance to test out um, your ideas and, and ask James for feedback as well, which would be really useful. Um, Charlotte, do you want to do this one? Oh, yeah. I just added this slide in um, as a cheeky call out, really, just to make sure if any of you um, are graduating um, between now and um, the end of October, um, it's just to say that there's a freelance grant um, application award at the moment open. Um, and uh, it's up for, it's, well, it's £250. Um, that uh, you can apply for to help with your kind of freelance um, online profile or it might be uh, that it helps towards paying for um, licenses or insurance or things like that to kind of get you started um, as you graduate. So if you haven't seen that, I think it was shared in the last uh, careers careers newsletter. But what we'll also do is make sure that the, the Google form is shared with the um, presentation so that you can apply for that. And it's been extended now to the 30th of June. So there's a little bit more time to, to get that that form completed and in 
um, and it's very much um, it's it's not being we're not selecting the um, applications in any way um, so you're not being judged by the strength of your idea um, it's very much around just support uh, for you as, as you graduate and are looking to go freelance potentially um, so yeah that that's that from me um, one one thought that I had for, for you all ahead of the session um, on Monday if if you are thinking of applying for the the um, social enterprise grant award it might be quite a good idea to just write a couple of thoughts down ahead of the session uh, just so that you could maybe share that with James and if you can't make Monday session and you want to uh, share your idea with James ahead of that um, application then again just email Louisa or I or both well email both of us and we can share that with James um, just to give you the maximum opportunity for kind of input from from James really that's it. Great. And um, so our final slide is um, just to flag up, you know, we're at the start of um, these two weeks of Workfest. So there's lots of other sessions to come along to. Um, tomorrow, we've got a really good one. Um, well, they're all really good, but the one, uh, one I'm involved in, so I know more about is the networking skills. That's tomorrow, 12 till 1. We're working with Creative Bath um, and some local um, industry professionals to um, yeah to deliver that session. So a practical sort of interactive session about networking, developing your your skills, and particularly in in this time, digitally or how to catch, sort of catch up a bit and um, make you know build your network, whatever uh, sector or background you're from. Um, and then also on Thursday morning, if any of you are from creative subjects and um, are graduating, then you might be interested to come along to our session about Emerge, the creative studio for graduates. Uh, we'll be explaining what Emerge is and um, and how you might, you know, how you can apply. So that's a, a studio, a funded studio program from the autumn. Um, so we'll be talking all about that on Thursday morning. And lots of other um, opportunities, um, yeah, in these two weeks. Um, and I shall just pop um, the feedback form for this session in the chat. So if you could click on that link, it's really helpful for us um, to get your feedback on these sessions for Workfest and make sure that we're offering uh, the right things for all of you. And you can always email us anytime with um, yeah any requests or support and um, also of course careers support appointments and all the resources on the website are available to you all um, as students and also if you are graduating for up to three years so I think that concludes our session if anyone's got any any questions or comments then um, please do ask them and just to say a very big thank you to James for being here and sharing his presentation that was really really helpful Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.